I'm Jess, this is Greg, and that's Piper, and this is the shuttle bus that we converted into our tiny home on wheels. This bus is a 25 foot long Thomas CL100 built on a 2003 Ford E450 chassis. It has the 7.3 power stroke turbo diesel engine and it only has 60,000 miles on it. It's an ex-prison bus that we bought in Arizona. We spent eight months of the last year converting it and now we live in it full time. One of the first things you'll notice about the exterior of our bus is these vinyl privacy window films. These actually were on the bus when we purchased it, but we loved them so much that we decided to keep them. As you can see, they're a one-way film, so standing out here, you can't see inside the bus, but looking from the inside out, it's a perfectly clear view. It's just a little bit of nice added privacy whenever we're in cities or camping around other people. Up in the front here, we have our outdoor electrical panel. So this is our shore power inlet. This is a 110 outlet, and this is a 12 volt outlet just for a little bit of added power when we're outside. This is our dog Piper, who has decided to join me for this portion of the tour. So when you come into the bus immediately to your left, you will see our entryway key ring and some light switches. So this is obviously where we keep our keys and a little shelf for some smaller items. And then we have some light control here. Two of these do interior lights, the bathroom lights, and some puck lights right over the door. And then the far switch does our porch light, which lets us have light outside. It's great for taking the dog out at night. Directly across from our side door, we have our bathroom. This isn't exactly a standard shower shape. We wanted to create sort of an angled floor plan for the shower to maximize space inside, but to keep the entryway area feeling as open as possible. So to do this, we took a curdy shower pan and cut it on this angle and then tiled over it with two inch white hexagon tiles to create a totally waterproof base for the shower. On top of that, we did install a teak mat made out of teak decking planks. This is a really nice option because it keeps your feet out of any standing water and off of the cold tile. And it's a really beautiful finish in this space as well. On the walls, we have Duma wall tile. These are large vinyl tiles that are completely waterproof and cover three of the walls in the shower. And then as you can see, we also have our toilet in the shower. This is a cassette toilet, which means it can be completely removed from the shower when you are showering. And because it's a portable system, it means we did not have to install a black tank in this build. We do have a gray water tank under the rig. It is a 30 gallon gray water tank that is mounted in the rear of the bus. Lastly, for privacy and our bathroom and shower space, we installed a Nautilus RV shower door. This is a retractable door, so whenever you want the space to be open or to dry out after you use the shower, the door is completely invisible, but whenever you need privacy, you just snap the door into place and you have a floor to ceiling door that looks really, really awesome in this space. The last component of our entryway is our barn door. This acts as a partition between the cab and the coach. This is made of oak planks that I built myself and I stained sort of this deep brown color. The hardware is just something we picked up on Amazon and it was really easy to install and fairly inexpensive. And then we did include a hook on the middle of the door which is great for coats and also for hanging towels after you get out of the shower. Looking down the bus you'll notice that we have three Max Air roof vent fans. Because this bus was a prison bus originally, none of our windows actually open and so having adequate ventilation is a must and these fans definitely do the job for us. Also looking at the ceiling, you'll notice our 12 volt puck lighting and the ceiling itself is tongue and groove cedar planks. I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. This is our kitchen space. So we went with butcher block countertops. They're an inch and a half thick and we sealed them with Waterlox urethane sealant. So it gives them a really nice high gloss finish. On this end of our kitchen, we have our fridge. So this is actually a chest freezer that we converted into a fridge using an Inkbird thermostat. We really like this as a fridge option because it's a little more economical than some of the other RV fridges that you'll see. And then it's top loading, which allows the unit to retain its cold temperature a little bit better, which means it's not as heavy of a draw on our power system. 
Next to our fridge, we have our oven. This is a stove oven combo unit by Wedgwood and it was a Facebook Marketplace find. We love that it has four burners on top and a fully functional oven on the inside so we can cook big meals and also bake right here in our bus. Underneath the oven, we have a large storage drawer. This holds the majority of our pots and pans and some appliances, our instant pot and our blender are in here as well. And then over here on the end, we have our sink. This was an exciting upgrade for us because in our first rig, we had a really small sink that was a little hard to use. So we put the biggest sink in the space that we could possibly fit. We really like this model because it has these little lips on the inside. So we use those to hold either a cutting board or a dish drying rack or this extra piece of counter space that we were able to plane down to fit. So it gives you a little bit more working room when you're in the kitchen. We have two faucets over our sink here. This larger one is touch activated and it's primarily for dishwashing or washing hands. This smaller one goes through our three-stage drinking water filtration system so that we can drink the water right out of our tank safely. Underneath our sink, we have a little bit more storage. This is where we keep our trash can as well as our drinking water filtration system and a little bit of cleaning supplies. And then above the kitchen, we have some of our overhead storage. Greg did most of the carpentry in this build and he did build all of the overhead cabinets that are in here. In this one, we keep some toiletries, and on the far side here, we keep most of our coffee supplies, which is very important. So this is where we keep the majority of our stuff that we use on a day-to-day -day in the kitchen space. Next to our kitchen is our closet space. When we went to test fit a hanger in the space we had designated for our closet, we found because of the curve of the bus walls, it didn't fit the traditional way. So we got a little creative. And we installed our closet on a drawer slide so that you have access to clothes this way instead of traditionally parallel with the bus. It still gives us plenty of room for clothes and it's a really great feature to have on board. Above our closet, we have an extra overhead cabinet for some overflow storage. And then below the closet, we have a few other things. This drawer here is for our kitchen utensils and silverware. And then below that, on this side, we have our 12 volt freezer, which has been a huge addition for us. And then the last component is our small pullout pantry. We store all of our dry goods in this and some extra cooking supplies as well. Across from our kitchen space is our couch area. This is an L-shaped couch design that we completely custom designed and built ourselves. The cushions on the couch are four inch high density foam covered in a brown faux suede material. And then we did include a back on this couch because we found the curve of the exterior bus walls to be a little uncomfortable to lean against. We did include on the top of the back of the couch a piece of butcher block countertop. This extra piece serves as a place to keep our herb garden and it does sort of function as a coffee table when you're sitting down here. We designed the base of the couch to be as functional as possible so it has a number of different configurations that it can be put into. We use the commonly seen sliding slat design for each one of our base pieces, allowing each of these components to move independently of the other to create our different setups. One of the unique pieces of our couch design is this static panel that we included on the middle section. Because this panel doesn't move, we were able to include some components on it that we could access directly from the front of the couch. So we have a 12 volt outlet, a 110 outlet, our propane detector, our Propex heater vents, which I'll talk more about in a minute, and then the base for our Lagoon table mount. We know that these Lagoon mounts are very popular in van and bus builds, but honestly, we think it lives up to the hype and we love ours. To be able to move this table around in the space so easily keeps things really open and accessible. And then when we put our couch into bed mode, it's important to be able to take this table completely down and this mount makes it really easy to do that. On top of this mount, we have my epoxy river table. This is something I built entirely myself out of a piece of live edge wood. It was definitely a labor of love, but honestly my favorite project throughout the entire build. It gives a really nice accent piece to this section of the bus and I really love how it kind of ties the space together. Going back to this front panel, our Propex heater vents are also vented out the front of the couch. We have a Propex propane heater on board. It is installed under our couch. It has been super effective at heating this space and keeping it super comfortable in here, even into the teens, and we love having it on board. 
Also under our couch is our entire electrical system. This was by far the biggest investment of the build, but absolutely worth it. We have 618 amp hours of SOK lithium batteries and a 3000 watt pure sine wave inverter as our main power components. We also have a 110 breaker box and a 12 volt fuse box as some of the other main components that live under the couch. We also have our 40 amp MPPT charge controller from Rich Solar. This is the charge controller for our 1200 watt solar array that lives on the roof of the bus. This is a huge upgrade from our previous solar systems and it's kept our batteries completely full every single day we've been out here under the desert sun and we're really, really happy we went the extra mile and splurged on all these panels. At the end of our couch, we have this sort of corner cabinet here and this is a super multifunctional space. So at the top here, we have what I like to call our control panel. This has a couple of different switches and thermostats that let us control some crucial components to the bus. The bottom right, we have our water pump switch. The bottom left is our Victron battery monitor. Top right is our Propex thermostat. And then top left is our hot water heater thermostat. We do have on-demand hot water in the bus. It is a propane powered unit. Because it's on-demand and tankless, we're able to have as much hot water as we want so long as we don't run out of propane. Moving down from there, we of course have an extra piece of butcher block countertop to top this space. We have our junk drawer here, which is full of a whole bunch of different stuff, uh, but super functional. Everybody needs a junk drawer. Underneath that, we have our last kitchen appliance, our microwave. We really love the convenience of having one of these on board and to be able to slide it completely away and have it totally free of the counters does create a little bit more space in the kitchen. We have a little book storage cubby in here as well, just trying to find a little bit of extra space and utilize it for storage. And then on the bottom, we have Piper space. This is where our dog Piper's crate is for um, whenever we need to leave her in the bus alone. Um, this is where we kind of keep all of her things. <laughs> In the rear of the bus is our bed platform. This is a six inch memory foam short queen size mattress. So it's the width of a queen, but the length of a full, but that's been plenty of space for us so far. The platform itself has hinges installed in the rear of it so that we can lift it to access storage space underneath. We actually have a linear actuator that we use to raise and lower the platform. It's a little slow, but it does get the job done and it's a super strong and easy to use method in order to access that space. Under the bed, it's mostly storage space. To the right, we have our freshwater plumbing system. So our pump and our accumulator and other components live in that space. To the far left is our propane locker, which is sealed off completely from the interior of the bus and is only accessible through an outside door. Up in the front, we have our 100 gallon fresh water tank. This has been a huge upgrade for us. We only had seven gallons of water in our first van when we started out. So 100 gallons feels like an absolute luxury, but it has been wonderful to have it with us. At the foot of the bed, we have our primary closed storage area. One of these areas is for Greg, the middle one is mine, and then the last one is actually for laundry storage. So there's a shelf in there, and because my clothes are a little bit smaller, they fit up on the shelf. But for Greg's, we decided to include something that we call a laundry chute. So this is a area that runs from the bottom of the cabinet all the way to the floor of the bus, and we installed a laundry bag in it, so that way Greg has a really contained space to put his clothes that are totally out of the way, and it's really easy to access that bag and pull it out through the back door of the bus when it's time to do laundry. So up here at the head of the bed, we have our custom tambour door. So when we were designing the bed area, I was super concerned about keeping enough natural light up here in this space, but I really didn't feel like a curtain was secure enough in this area. So what I did is I designed this custom flexible tambour door. It's made of plywood slats and it has a canvas backing. So when you wanna let light in, you have it in this position, which is all the way down. And then when you want a little bit more privacy, you can just slide it up into place for a wall where there once was a window. Above the head of the bed is the last of our overhead storage. This compartment and the one on the end we use for extra clothes and toiletries, but this one in the middle here is our designated electronic storage. So aside from our WeBoost cell signal booster receiver and our hotspot that we use for internet, in the middle we have our projector. So this is what we use to watch TV, and we also have a screen that we hang with magnets in the bus in a couple different spots. So at the foot of the bed, we have magnets embedded in our ceiling that the screen can attach to, and then we can watch TV while we're in bed. 
And then the projector also has a magnet in it so we can mount it in the ceiling towards the front of the bus, kind of in the couch area. And we have other magnets for the screen as well. And putting it up in the front near the couch is really great for when you're playing video games or you wanna watch movies with friends. On either side of the bed, we did include some outlets so we can charge our devices while we're up in this space. And then on Greg's side of the bed, we also have our heated floor thermostat controls. So we did include a heated floor system in the majority of the bus's floor. We went with a quiet warmth radiant heating mat. It's definitely a luxury for this build, but it's been so nice to take the edge off of those cold floors on some of the winter mornings that we've had in here already. On the back wall of the bus, we have our mountain shelf. This is something that I built out of some leftover planks from the barn door that's up in the front, and I stained it to match. And then above that, we have our air conditioner. So this is a regular window unit air conditioner, but because of the large solar capacity and battery capacity that we have, this can be powered entirely by our solar system. It does vent out of the back like a normal window AC unit, but we have a garage space behind this wall that the air conditioner can vent into. And the bus came with some diesel exhaust fans, and we use those fans now to draw the heat out of the garage space whenever the air conditioner is on. Let's go check out the garage space now. This is our garage space. Up at the top there, you can see that AC unit that Jess mentioned earlier. Underneath, we decided to install a drip tray to catch any of the condensation that happens when the AC will be running. Over here, we have one of those exhaust fans that Jess mentioned earlier. And in this space, we decided to utilize floor to ceiling shelving to house all of this junk that you see before you. We are musicians by trade, so having adequate storage for our guitars and music gear is a absolute must for us. And we also use this space to house uh, camping gear and tools and really anything that we need readily accessible through the back end of the bus. We got time on our side. We're in a state of hope. Thank you so much for taking a tour of our home with us. If you enjoyed this tour or want more Bus Life content from us, please do like and subscribe so we can keep making these videos for you. We are also on TikTok and Instagram at Go There Free. Thank you so much and we will see you soon. Everything here, at least to stay alive. And the time that we share makes it all worthwhile.